NTT Data began our Zero Trust journey years ago. Our security leadership recognized the need for a flexible approach that could maintain security across hundreds of global operating companies and chose Zero Trust as the way forward. Hiroshi Hanjo, Head of Cybersecurity and Governance at NTT Data's Technology and Innovation General Headquarters in Tokyo, Steve Williams, Enterprise CISO for NTT Data Services, and Marcus Kinsler, EMEA CISO at NTT Data EMEA Limited took time to speak about why NTT Data looked to zero trust and what they learned from the process. We started as NTT Data overall, the journey towards zero trust in 2018. So certainly pre-pandemic and part of the conversation with the board at that point was around how do we want to survive the customer expectations that are changing, the regulatory landscape that's changing, and frankly, just the way that our workers wanted to look at um, how they want to participate in an enterprise class company. And if you just look at that aspect alone, so you can have the best technology in the world, but if your employees make a mistake, that's usually the Achilles heel of most security programs. And especially as you shift out from a uh, traditional brick and mortar going into the office idea, and service providers have always been this way, the vast majority of our workers don't sit in our facilities, they sit in client facilities, they're doing project work. We're enabling our transformations of those customers and clients, it's very important for us. And the only way to have that kind of model is through a zero trust world. Before I think about a zero trust approach, I think the longer the list gets of benefits I could probably derive, not just for a CISO, but for various other corporate functions as well. I think it's a bit like with the topic cloud security governance. Uh, if you go cloud, um, you need to adopt a new set of capabilities, not just for the CISO, but also, for example, for, for procurement, whether you procure a server for your own data center or whether you procure um, Microsoft with an SAS service requires complete different skill sets. And I think as a global um, trusted innovator, we have to act our game and if we are operating in an environment that is constantly changing where are con constantly every day new business uh, digital use cases appear either uh, initiated from initiated from internal um, functions or from our customers the more we are kind of driven to adopt new capabilities and I think that keeps us alive. Uh, from a CISO point of view, I like the central policy and local enforcement. I need one policy, I can push a button and the policy goes out to all um, the servers or all the end user devices. And I think this is a major step forward compared to several years ago, where it may, be, it may have taken me a year to define a very static policy. And then it took another year to have it reviewed and approved. And by the time it was released, it was outdated because it didn't address the risks of at the time. The policy of NTT data, when we uh, invest on the security, we do it globally, no, not only a certain region, it's, it's the global project. You know, the only way we can grow globally, uh, consistently, um, with those flexible, you know, um, environment is the zero trust architecture. You're going to be injecting an awful lot of change and driving a very different culture when you choose zero trust. So the first stop and in inevitably has to be that executive layer in the board to get commitment to inflict that kind of change into the environment. Um, so I'll, I'll focus instead on kind of the, the next logical real step of what do you do? And I think for us, the, the choice was if you think of zero trust as a concept, you see in the uh, kind of industry a model of identity-based zero trust, network-based zero trust, or data-based zero trust. Um, and, and while all three can work, I would argue that the identity-based zero trust is, is the only real one that for large complex organizations will stand the test of time. So make that choice as to kind of first, what zero trust architectural framework or model you want to follow and that would dictate your next step because then you come to the hygiene part of this you can't just start turning on zero trust or buying zero trust technologies and assuming everything's going to work 
you have to pay off that legacy technical or process debt that every company has. I don't care how good you are or what your investments have been. I guarantee there have been shortcuts and whether it's organic or just process oversights um, or just changes that haven't been reflected. Cleaning that up so that you have a faster path forward really should be your first avenue um, of approach. So we'll call that the hygiene way. Um, when you choose the identity model, what that really means is first identify your stakeholders of who, who participates in the identity ecosystem. A lot of times companies have two views. It's either HR owns identity or IT owns identity. And I would posit both of those are actually wrong. Um, what you're talking about is an abstraction layer to identity. Identity is a much broader concept than a human. And that's where the HR model falls down is we of course have service and process accounts. We have cloud application accounts to deal with micro segmentation. We have IOT and OT. We have many things that HR is never ever going to deal with. But from a security perspective, of course, we have to consider an identity and we have to treat it as an identity. It will be a huge part of our zero trust journey. From an IT perspective, you may operate a platform, but that doesn't mean that you own OT. Uh, that's very rare for IT to have anything to do with OT. So again, as you think of the broader aspect of this, the only company, the only group rather, that lives across the entire identity space is security. It's the same principle that you look at from an Amazon perspective. The reason why Amazon doesn't have just one account for everybody in the world is because we don't trust each other. It's a security principle at the end of the day. Identity is there for security. The starting point for me would be really to look at your business case. What are the key drivers for your business case in the market? Where's the market going? Um, one of those kind of underpinning things that we've used, at least within the data group set of companies, has been the see it, manage it, secure it principle. And that's really just a simplistic way that we approach the board very early on to suggest where would you prioritize your investments? And the simple part is I have to see something before I can manage it and I have to manage it before I can secure it. And I also think zero trust is maybe a bit of a, a, a terminology that is maybe not giving a true picture on what it really means. I mean, zero trust is you don't give anybody trust unless um, somebody or something authenticated clearly um, to your um, asset. And I think with this new environment that we are talking about with Go Cloud, with software as a service environments, other environments, I think, yes, a zero trust model is the initial state. You don't trust anything that tries to get access, but you have to provide some kind of access first to your network. And then it's probably more of a context-based context -based, um, access provision you give as you try to um, trust your um, individual or your device that tries to access um, as, as it goes along and as it, as it tries to access your corporate um, uh, sources. Again, internationally, NTT is a very complex beast, hundreds of companies, we're 900 plus companies. And, and I think securities largely led the way in terms of that collaborative spirit. And we have a lot of conversations, we have a lot of views in terms of how would we like to protect what ultimately we've cultivated trust-wise with our clients and with the market space. So for years, we've been discussing how do we want to uh, enable and protect the brand and and yes, I do believe we had that kind of vision from a North Star perspective using kind of a navigational term. How do we want to proceed? That doesn't necessarily mean, but I think one of the other powerful statements that we also adhere to is the idea of aligned independence. Because not every operating company has the same business. We're not all doing technology, for example. We have energy companies within NTT. Um, we, we have a vast portfolio of companies. So being able to choose things that move the kind of in the same direction, but don't mandate that we all are doing the exact same thing, the exact same technology, the exact same process, that would also be a, a relatively foolish business maneuver on our part because we're treating everything the same when in fact it's not. So we've gone out of our way for years now to talk through that North Star principle, the aligned independence principle, to really give business flexibility while also some cohesion across the security space. And, you know, as you know, 
we are the trusted global innovator, right? So trust means everything for NTT data. Learn more at our website. See it. Manage it. Secure it. <laughs>